Well, hi, and thanks for joining me as I continue working on this uh, pretty nice clock radio, which for the most part appears to be working, but has a few problems. The last video we were looking at the output tube, and I raised some questions. I'm still not sure what to do about that. Now we're going to look at this tuning capacitor, which I'm pretty sure has a short in it. I'll show you why I think that. We tune here. Right there. So we're going to try to spot what's causing that short. Now, these capacitors are prone to injury uh, from people poking stuff in the radio, reaching in with their fingers, not knowing what they're doing. So occasionally you'll find one of the outside plates knocked in. Also, the capacitor is, is, can be used to make uh, general tuning adjustments um, during alignment by bending these plates. But generally, you're bending the outside plate away from the other plates. So it shouldn't introduce a short. But clearly, something is happening. So, i got to get this into a really good observational position here. Let's just... Table. There we go. And I think I'm going to use the uh, close up camera, it might be really useful for this. backed off the focus. Let me change the focus again on it. We want to be right up close. Right up close. I actually want to focus on the far side, which is pretty hard to do. So, so I'm just looking now for any plate that is obviously bent out of position. pretty good here. We can't really see down... Oh, wait a minute. That one on the left. i got to be careful what I touch with this uh, camera. It's a camera. It looks like it's got a plastic shell. Let me just show you what I'm up to here. It looks like i got a plastic shell on the camera, but it's not. It's actually aluminum, and I don't dare touch it against the radio. This is kind of scary, in fact. Because I'm looking at the screen. The left plate on the larger capacitor might be pinched in a little bit, but you know what? I don't see anything. Nothing dramatic there. Okay. We'll go to the exactly where it shorts. Got this capacitor in there, it's really hard to see what is going on. Well, we're going to take a guess. I'm going to push that outside plate out just a little bit further. Let's see. Uh, I'll bring it down to the point of contact. And I'll try to manipulate that plate. It's kind of hard because it's, it's not in a... So, um, nah. Didn't seem to do anything, did it? Oh yeah, this is not going to be easy. Okay, so I, I just want to make this like a hair trigger. So it's just barely touching. Okay, there we are. Now, I'll just manipulate this thing a little bit. Oh! It's 
super sensitive. Barely touching these plates. Very, very sensitive right over here. sensitive everywhere. It's not likely to be dirt or something like that. It's, it's much more likely to be a direct plate to plate contact. And I have seen these where the whole capacitor is out of alignment. The, the plates, instead of passing through the center, they're all over to the edge. And any one of them can make a contact. And you can't see any of them bent or anything out of ordinary. It's just the whole set of them can be over slightly. Okay, so we're very close to the short, but we're on the open side of the short. So let me try from here. What I'm doing is I'm touching each individual plate. Just barely touching it. force now. Hang on another second there. I think it's sensitive enough now. Well, I'm wondering now if there's some cold solder joint or something underneath the board, but that doesn't make sense because it's really all about where you rotate this uh, this knob here. That seems to control the effect. Wouldn't expect that if it's a bad solder joint. And you know there's a lot of these things are soldered in in quite a few places. So okay let's get it. Okay it's a hair trigger again. Oh fooey bump the radio there doesn't help me if it doesn't matter what plate I touch right in there maybe Of it's just dirty uh, dirty um, pivot points dirty uh, I, I, again I wouldn't think it'd be so specific and you turn the control a bunch of times it would kind of change its nature I, I don't think that's the problem but I don't know what the problem is yet okay. 
as I'm doing this, the sensitivity or the trigger, the hair, hair triggerness, or would that be hairness trigger? The hair triggerness of uh, what I've done here is varying as I'm going along. So that would lead me to conclude I'm reaching more sensitive places when in fact just the thing is becoming more sensitive on its own to this. You, you can't, uh, this is a feather touch. a little too sensitive I can't find the problem Okay, because we can't figure anything out here. Next best thing is to take a guess. <laughs> Start guessing. I'm gonna guess. That's a good shot. Let's see if I can just draw the focus down to the bottom of the plates. Okay, so I'm going to guess this outside plate here is in trouble. I'm going to bend it. I don't think I bent it, but let's see what happens. If it's the outside plate, should be able to bring this into clo almost into contact. And we'll touch it here. Can't be this plate. Not enough of a hair trigger. Let's try it again. That's a hair trigger now. Shaking my uh, my bench sets this off. Well, I'm not really getting anywhere with all this checking, am I?
just seems to be sensitive everywhere. Okay, have a look here. Let's take a look here. Oh, th this might be helpful. This might be helpful. This maybe I should have been doing it like this right from the start. It's always the kind of thing you say late in the game here. Okay, so the name of the game here is to recognize any plates touching or any plates that seem to be not centered. So I find when I'm looking at this, if I look just kind of sit back, I, I have just sat back to look at my computer screen, and uh, I do see something funny on the left side. The plate from the left that you can see, plate number three and four, seem to have an extra big gap. It's really not a gap. I am looking for something too close together. Uh hmm. Well, let's let's check right in there for. I mean, the the set has gone quiet now, so it, it's really shorted out. But let's let's give it some hard shoves and see if we can bring it back to life here. It's hard to pick the uh, the one plate. I heard something. I'm trying to grab that one plate there and push it a bit. It's a very microscopic situation here. My somewhat blunt tools not doing the best job of it. I heard that click again. You can tell I'm putting pressure on it because the thing will, will move a little like this when I go to do it. I can't, I can't get it there. Wow, okay. I'm, I'm pushing on the... I'm pushing on the rotating plates. That's the one I want to push on. I have to separate it a lot, I think, to overcome the short circuit because it's... What if I take it back a bit? No. As soon as I swing it back, it's... Hey. How come they made the bloody radio like this? <laughs> what are the chances of seeing through that plate? Okay, let's see if I can actually, using this camera, look right up between those plates at the rotating plates, which are receding, and see if we can spot something. Oops. Hold on. I'm going to rearrange things a little bit here. Yeah, I'm right on the trigger point. So. Sorry, I should, shouldn't use the camera as a hammer. <laughs> I want to be able to rotate the radio relative to the light I'm shining on, which is what I'm trying to achieve, and have the camera position not change. So I got the camera. I'll show you what I've got here. Here's what I've got. Okay, so that on my on my rotating board. I can rotate it, you can see the camera not moving. 
relative to the radio. But the radio is moving relative to the light here. So th that's what I got going. Now you can see that the camera casts a shadow right into the very thing that we're trying to examine. So that's what that shadow is. So this is all about all about lighting and as usual, lighting and luck. You can't tell, I'm rotating the uh, radio. Just, just not quite getting the light in there. Okay, let's see what we can see. trying with a flashlight now. I don't think we'd ever be able to see a contact up in there. We literally have to go one plate at a time here. Okay, so I'm starting just to show you what I'm looking at. Right in here. Right in there. Starting with that one. What could we possibly see in there? Know, it's like a weird visual effect, you can't really see. Yeah, you know, I don't think it's gonna work. I just don't think we can see enough. See? Easy. I told you this would be easy. <laughs> easy, easy, schmeasy. Well, this has to be fixed. Uh, we can't walk away from this. Hmm. What a radio. What a radio. But wasn't there something else? Was there something? Wasn't there three things? Oh yeah, the front panel cleanup. Boy, that's that's gone way down the list now. Ah, I don't know what to think at this point. Silence has descended upon me. Um, Let's do this. Let's let's just convince ourselves that it really is shorting plates. So I'm going to turn the power off. Power's off. That means the clock's not running either. And this meter is set to make a tone. I'm just going to read from plate one side to the other. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It shouldn't be like that. Oh, I guess I'm reading through a coil or something. Three on the meter. Okay, so that's what a dead short shows. A zero. Can you see that? Can't quite see it on the meter. Can you? Okay, once again, dead short. Get down to a zero. And the capacitor. Get down to oh, down to two. That two should drop to zero when the plate's short. Holy smokes. 
how am I going to demonstrate this? Because they're on the move. Challenges galore. Okay, I'm now going to try to turn this thing to the contact. Draper! Okay, see it drop to zero there? Back up. There it is, two again. Can you see that on camera? Yes, you can. So I think that tells you, undoubtedly, that the plates are shorting. I mean, I didn't have much doubt to begin with, but we'll try the other plates now. The other plates read 13, and when we go to the short area, nothing happens. And I'm not surprised. Uh, pretty sure the second set I just tested are the oscillator plates. Plates the capacitor for the oscillator. And the effect in the radio when the short occurs sounds to me like the RF is being removed from the front end of the radio. And that sounds like the other plates are shorting. Which is essentially shorts, shorts out the front end of the radio completely. So we managed to, to, to uh, add some more evidence that the problem is plates. We now know which side of the capacitor it is. The last thing on earth I want to do is remove it from the circuit board. That's, that's no small deal. Oh boy. I've done a couple of these that were pretty tough, but I've actually never done one in this kind of, of uh, geometric position, or the way they position this capacitor, where as the plates mesh, they or the point at which they mesh is really not visible. Or is it? Here, I've got it turned off right now, so we can just flip it right around here. Look way down. Oh my gosh, you can hear it. You can hear it for crying out loud. Can you hear that? You must be able to hear it. I mean, something is really crashing. Oh, I got a good view now. I got a, this, this angle I'm on right now. Easiest thing in the world to spot this. Oh my gosh, okay, give me the close up camera again. I think I got the angle here. So I think I got the idea too. The idea is to put the light beyond the capacitor, not on the capacitor, beyond the capacitor. So you light up the background and then attempt to see the background through the plates. So my lighting technique was wrong before. Okay. Starting on the outside one there. Coming across the outside one. No way. This is going to find it. You might have some trouble following which one I'm looking at. I'm looking at each one. I'm down to basically the last one. So, 
Is that a scratch mark I see on that outer lower plate? I think that one looks really close. Oh, oh, lost it from me. That outer plate looks real close. Let's, let's bend out the outer plate uh, here. Let's bend it out. Let's bend it out way down near the bottom. It does not appear to be pinched at all, but let's bend it. See, the radio is off, so I can just use any old tool I like here. I want to make sure I bend the plate I'm interested in and not its brother beside it. Hey, that's just about got it get at the plate up here when it's closed. Maybe. Not with this tool. Okay, so I have to, <laughs> I have to bend the least accessible part of the plate. So, I need a pin. I need a needle or something. Let's see if I can give you a view of what I'm doing here. That's all it was. <laughs> yeah. I could have guessed that for crying out loud. It's almost always an outside plate. Don't know why I did that. I don't hear any rubbing anymore, so let's Let's turn this guy back on, see if we've at least eliminated this problem. This is a serious problem with this radio, so... I think I worked too hard on it. Okay, now... We're all set here, are we? Safe, everything's safe? Yep. Yeah. Okay, radio should be on. Heating up. Now we'll tune it. Voila, no short. Wow, that took a long time to do something real simple, didn't it? But I really want to be very careful with these capacitors. If you start bending the plates willy-nilly, you're going to end up with multiple short circuits in them. And then, good luck. Good luck trying to sort out multiple short circuits. So you don't want to fool around too much with these things. Yeah, that's 
good. Okay, so I think, uh, I think from here, the only thing that really lies ahead is an alignment, I think. So thanks again for watching, and uh, I think that's what we'll attend to next. Still not sure what to do about that output. Too, but we'll see you on the next video. Hey, and if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Thanks.